Hello, KCIW listeners, and welcome to Curry Cafe, where we put together a panel of volunteers and guests who discuss various topics from whimsical and fun to more serious subjects. You know, Rick, that's the first time I think I listened to your intro, and, and I realized that that's almost exactly what I say as the intro. So I won't say it this time. Okay. I do have a, a panel of interesting guests here, and we will be talking about an interesting subject today. So let's just start out by uh, going around the table and have everybody introduce themselves, uh, why they think they should be, or whatever they want to do. It's pretty informal. I'm Robert O'Sullivan. I have been involved in politics and other things all of my life virtually, and um, I'm happy to be here. And I am Rick McNamer, volunteer here at KCIW, and found out on my extensive research that I'm part of the 60% of the Americans who've never really read through the Constitution, but I've been uh, cramming and hopefully learned something today. And my name is uh, Kevin Hendrick. I live in Crescent City, California, and um, I've been writing a column for the Del Lord Triplicate. I wrote a column about the Constitution, which Rick read and then assumed I knew something. <laughs> and uh, we'll see. He invited me to come up. Before we go any further, I forgot to mention that everybody here is uh, expressing their own opinions or opinions of researchers that they may have researched. And should you want to join in the conversation with some of your ideas, you can text us. Now, everybody get ready to write this down, 541-661-4098. 541-661-4098. Operators are standing by to receive your texts, and uh, let us know what you think about what we're saying. So who wants to start out today? How about appointing Mr. Robert O'Sullivan? Okay. The main expert, if that's okay, Robert. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm happy to. Uh, there are some things that are quite basic that most Americans don't have any idea of. And at, it, at the heart of it is the United States has never been a democracy, never even been close. When the Constitution of the United States was adopted, the only people who were really involved in any voting were white male property owners. Women were excluded. Native Americans were excluded. African Americans, whether free and there were some that were free or enslaved, were not included. It was strictly a... Uh, way of organizing things that was done by white males who were much richer than virtually anyone else. How, could I just get a, a definition on that property owners? Could this mean many acres or if you... Uh, little, if it, you uh, it, I believe it varied from state to state and even area to area, but in most cases it, it had to do with substantial ownership of property, including possibly slaves, which were considered property. Uh, and most of the people involved in the uh, adopt adoption of the Declaration of Independence and of the Constitution were themselves slave owners. And what is more uh, far away from an idea of democracy than slavery? So uh, from the beginning, uh, this has never been a democracy, and there were things that were put together in the Constitution which pretty much prevented ever being close to being a true democracy. And that true democracy idea I'm talking about has the assumption that everybody's vote counts the same. Well, the votes of people in Montana and Wyoming their votes count a lot more than the people in California or Florida or New York because they have two people in the U.S. Senate, whether they have millions and millions of their population or are or, or far less. And anyway, there, there are other ways to get around. Or there are other things to talk about what a, a true democracy is. But uh, what makes it really difficult is it's so hard to change the Constitution. And uh, there are two ways. One is uh, 
involves uh, both houses of Congress and then the states, and another is by calling a constitutional convention, and that's extremely difficult to do. So uh, anyway, those who assume that this is a democracy and that the Constitution is truly a democratic document uh, has some learning to do. Before we, get, I, I know this isn't the Constitution, but I'm always, I always think of this when I think of uh, the slavery. Back when uh, Thomas Jefferson wrote the, um, the sentence that when when he penned the sentence that all it's all, all men are created. Yeah, equal. it's self it's self evident that all men are created equal. He was probably handed that pen by a slave. Could well have been. Yeah, and he he had many slaves of his own. They stayed in the family after he died. He also had a sort of slave mistress. If you've ever been to uh, a Monticello, you, you'll, they will take you through the slave quarters and they'll show you the fields where they worked and how, had all the underground stuff that the slaves traveled around the house and so they wouldn't be out there in the sight of everybody. There was a dumb waiter that brought the food up to the, to the dining room where there were people visiting and it yeah, I, I can remember in school uh, I think the teacher he, saying, well, well, well yeah, uh, George Washington had slaves, but he treated them very well. <laughs> and how do we know that, really? I, I, well, we didn't, but, <laughs> but when you're in the second grade, teachers sure. are not teaching you bad stuff about well, whatever. I right. heard that uh, Jefferson invented the dumbwaiter, but Trump has uh, affected it. <laughs> <laughs> so... The, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> so uh -oh, we, we may have on. already uh, uh, dug up some controversy. So okay. if you want to participate by a text, it's 541-661-4098. Operators are standing by. Okay. So the high reverence that the Constitution and the Founding Fathers and all of that, I mean, I think there was... Partly a reason for that. There was a, a big, uh, sometimes heroic thing that they, they did. A lot of fancy words. And me, it's hard reading that Constitution. Again, this is the first time I've really tried. So it's almost in lawyer speak, but I guess they were bright people. But right away, we the people, it doesn't really mean all people. Mm -hmm. So there's kind of a negative right off the top. And there, there was even the making black, Americans as three fifths of a three percent in the percent. way, uh, yeah, numbers were counted. Mm -hmm. I think in doing the research that I did for my column, uh, which I called that or described the Constitution as a living document, I think the value of it is that it can be amended and has been amended. So many of the things that you've described were true, of course, when mm -hmm. it all started, but um, in the aftermath of the Civil War. The um, amendments uh, 13 through 15 started redressing some of the inequities of freeing the slaves, for example, giving them the right to vote and um, setting some standards. And in looking through the amendments and the, the time frames that the changes happened, they were in response to actions of of the people. In many cases, um, the change doesn't happen in Washington. The white guys sitting there are not going to fix the problems without other people pointing it out. And so um, one thing I noticed is after prohibition was adopted, which was a, a, a movement that was, uh, I think, predominantly organized by women, that in the short aftermath after prohibition, the women got the right to vote. That happened because of that advocacy. And um, I noticed that uh, in 72, when the amendment was adopted that allowed 18-year-olds to vote, which was a big thing at the time, and that was right before I turned 18, um, that was in the aftermath of the advocacy around the Vietnam War, Drink. where the youth got organized, and, um, and then, then response happened. Change happened uh, as a result of that. And so uh, there are... There, it continues to be potential to change it, but there hasn't been an amendment since 1992, um, although the Equal Rights Amendment has been in process for a long Whether time. Whether it's still alive is questionable. It's, uh, uh, and yes. and it's, right. I think evidence that it's just harder and harder 
to get the those votes that you need, the two thirds of both houses, for example, and and ultimately three fourths of the states voting for an amendment is a big, yeah, is a heavy hard. is a heavy lift. Um, but one thing that impressed me is the first ten amendments were, are the bill called the Bill of Rights. Right. The first one I think is. I don't know if I should say it's one of my favorites. Okay, but it's the most free, important. But I, I think so. The of by far freedom of of speech and uh, and the press, um, and the right of people to peaceably assemble to and freedom uh, of religion to petition for the redress of grievances. I mean, as an activist, that's a that's yeah. a right that I cherish. That we're able to show up at government meetings and peacefully go out and protest and. Because those are the things ultimately that will change. They will help change things when the people decide what they want in an ideal society. And I think I think that's still possible to How make define peacefully. Um, well, there again, it's a lot of open to interpretation throughout the document. Sure. Yeah, it? that is one of the challenges. It's a, the, there are so few words, and the problem now is we have a Supreme Court that is interpreting not only the amendments and what the amendments mean, but, but uh, going back to the, I had read the amendments before, but I hadn't read the constitution body of itself, where the articles, the first um, articles powers set, and all that. Yep. well, the articles, one defines the legislative powers, two is executive powers, three is judicial powers, and that's the balance of, of government that's supposed to help things work. But the recent court decision on bump stocks reminded me that that's not about the Second Amendment. Their decision was based on administrative interpretation of a 1930 law. Yeah. And uh, interesting again, the ban on machine guns was adopted in the middle of Prohibition when the mobs were gunning people down with machine guns. And so they decided, well, maybe machine guns are not so good. And Clarence Thomas, in his judgment, decided that Bump stocks are not machine guns, even though they can shoot off 100 rounds a, a minute. Um, and that was not a decision on the amendment. It was a decision on the administrative ability to interpret legislation. And that is a very, very slippery slope. So what they were saying is that the... Uh, it was basically saying... Your firearms did, not, not, did not have the right to... To and involved that has to be that done they by interpreted it wrong that bump stocks are not machine guns. Okay. Even though, and I think it was one of the other justices on the right side of this said, if it walks like a duck and mm -hmm. quacks like a duck, it's a duck. Um, but yeah. that that I think, and th there's another case that's coming up, which is uh, uh, Chevron versus NRDC Natural Resources Defense Council. They established a, a rule that. Um, the court should defer to administrative interpretation of rules. By experts, by, by the government itself. Right. Yes. Right, exactly. So if that starts getting um, diluted, it's called the Chevron document, and it's a legal principle that courts should defer to the reasonable agency interpretation of ambiguous provisions in congressional statutes, which is how government works. The legislation passes the law. They can't cover all the details. Regs do they it. Can't, yeah. yeah, the regs do it. And um, Matt, if that, if that gets challenged, then the EPA will not be able to adopt rules to implement laws. Or and if the court is keep shooting things to, down. Yeah. I'd just like to add one little thing to anybody who's not familiar with a bump stock. Uh, go, on, go on YouTube, and there are some wonderful uh, videos there of people blowing up cactus in the desert and what how with. 100 Round Magazines, by the way, the, the guy who uh, did the shooting in Las Vegas had uh, 10, 12, 12 with 100 <laughs> Round Magazines. Right. Just happened to have the money to afford. And how many people did he kill? 60? A bunch. Too many. Not only killed a bunch, but wounded a bunch. And uh, I, I was like, this, when people say the word wounded, it's be like, Hoppy used to get a flesh wound, and in the next scene, he was fine again. Uh, no, you can be permanently crippled, brain damage, all sorts of things. Not to mention the, the, the trauma those people went through that weren't. Well, and it's, I think, worth noting that that rule was adopted in 2000, 
17 under President Trump, mm-hmm. um, under his administration. And it took forever. It took weeks and weeks and weeks. It, I, it, it, maybe a year yeah. before I, it happened. I'd I'd like, on my show, I would, every week I would do a countdown. You know, it's been nine weeks since the yeah. Congress hasn't done anything. So my point is the Supreme Court is now creating an imbalance in that three parts of the government where, I mean, our legislature is deadlocked, doesn't seem to be able to function right now. And the Supreme Court is making interpretations of our rights that are diverging from what I think is correct. The Supreme Court that there are at least three members of which who, who lied to get on the Supreme Court, quite obviously. Right. I'd like to uh, get back to the question of the Constitution itself. Um, the, there were, when the Constitution was originally passed, there were some things that were left undecided. And a lot of people, for various reasons, wanted them, them to be decided. And they were done, must have been three, four years later. Uh, and the Bill of Rights was the first 10 amendments. And, but one of the facts of American history is often, even though they're clear as to what they say Congress and later by the Civil Rights, uh, Civil War, post Civil War amendments, all government agencies cannot do, uh, things kept happening that involved governments doing exactly what they were forbidden to do. And and uh, this happened uh, after the the original amendments were passed on free speech. There was a Aliens and Sedition Act. This is back in like 1798. And after World War One, there was a similar type act. Uh, and and these were upheld in the courts. And even though they counter what is strictly forbidden by the Bill of Rights, which is part of the Constitution, it's been a problem all altogether. In uh, preparing for this program, I, I looked at some writings by by uh, Howard Zinn, who has writ- written a book that's very uh, wonderful called The People's History of the United States when he gets into issues that most history books don't get into. But he told the story uh, about... Uh, how on, uh, let's see if I have the page turned to the right, correct place, Uh, how even when the language is clear, it's often just ignored. And it turns out that during World War II, there was a movie producer who produced a movie about the uh, American Revolution uh, called The Spirit of 76. And this correctly, as most people knew, pointed out that it was war between the British and the colonists, the Americans. Uh, and anyway, he wound up being prosecuted and jailed under this American Sedition Act because the British were our allies and this film was countering our relationship with Great Britain. And according to what Zinn said, well, let me read it exactly. The name of the movie was The Spirit of 76, and the title of the court case against the filmmaker was U.S. versus the Spirit of 76. And the case sums up the relationship of the government to the Bill of Rights, U.S. versus the Spirit of 76. It was the President of the United States who, uh, Truman, you know, all of these things are forbidden, and yet they've survived and continue to survive. So, rather way outdated then they're well they're they're or did I, I read uh, that wrong i you know they're clear but the courts always has a way of ignoring the clear th- thoughts okay uh, and so was that was that this addition was that uh, supposedly for the greater good is that the reason that well was? Uh, this this happened in england when the american revolution was going on mm-hmm. uh people like william blake were literally jailed under a sedition act there and there there of course the monarchy was a factor and that anybody who said anything against the king uh, could be considered seditious and and the french revolution was going on and they were afraid that 
that same revolution would happen in Britain at the time. And Hitler did the same thing as well during World War II. He couldn't say anything against the war or he would have a bunk in Dachau. And that, but let me just go ahead, Ray. get the phone number in here again one more time. Okay. So if you want to take part in this or make a comment, it's 541-661-4000. Nine eight five four one six six one four zero nine eight. Operators are standing by. <laughs> and back to the Supreme Court, current Supreme Court. I was I did see a program over the weekend, and the gentleman was talking about how a, at least four of them, I think, would be considered strict. Oh, uh, let me originalist. I yes. suppose. Uh, in other words, they still want to read the Constitution as it was in the 1700s or 1800s. As put together by the rich white men exactly, with property. Exactly, exactly. So that, that's a problem. And is this, uh, we talked about this a little earlier before the show, but is the Supreme Court, uh, are they too powerful oh, these they're days? Enormously so. And it's, again, hard to change. I, me personally, I think it's time to increase the number of the uh, judges if we could, um, and uh, it would be nice to get rid of the electoral college, like you were saying. I, I, I have to quote Bill Maher here real quick. I'm sorry, but he said this <laughs> one time. He said, what, ha, let me think how this went. How could you have a state like Maine, whose population is a lobster, a bear, and Stephen King, <laughs> have the same amount? But it, I, I thought it went perfectly. So there's there's uh, a reason. It, it, it's getting kind of out of hand, I think. With uh, it, It's just not in balance. It can be abused like anything else, and that's what it's oh, been. I think it has been. Yes. Right. Speaking. The Supreme Court still does not have an enforceable ethics code. Right. Every other judge in the country in one way or another or government employee has codes of ethics that they have to abide by, but the Supreme Court does not. And look at what Thomas has done and what Alito has done. And uh, uh, the, to me, the most outrageously corrupt thing of all has to do with the spouse of the chief Justice Roberts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, she works for a headhunter firm for major law firms. And if you want to get a good lawyer to work in your firm, uh, why not have the wife of the Chief Justice's Supreme Court screen this person and, and see and, and get paid well for doing so? Many years ago, I was a state trooper and we'll- I had a particular interest in juvenile crimes, and and I gravitated towards juvenile crimes a lot. And a good friend of mine, who I met through this same thing, was a lawyer. It's a public defender, and he defended juveniles. Well, we had that interest, and we frequently met at seminars and things like that. But we also had the the uh, interest of music. He was uh, he had a a degree in music along with his law degree, and I. Don't have a degree, but I have a great interest in music, especially of the fifties. So one day we uh, we happened to meet up where we met up frequently and uh, accidentally at a, at a concert, at be a Bo Diddley concert, an outdoor Bo Diddley concert. And while we were waiting for the show to start, we both queued up to get a beer, and I offered to buy him the beer. Oh, I forgot to say that in the intro, he was a judge. Now he had just been appointed a judge. And uh, I offered to buy him the beer, and he cited the fact that he was not allowed to <laughs> to take gifts as a judge. Now, I had already been retired, so it wasn't like I was going to have a case in, in his court coming up any time soon. But uh, Ray was, was, I'm sure, interpreting that pretty strictly. <laughs> but that, that, that was... How about a cruise took. to Indonesia? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey, hey, Ray, how about I buy you a motorhome? <laughs> <laughs> and these same judges you were talking about, they... So far, if I'm right, they are been refusing to recuse themselves. Yes, right. from K. And uh, boy, is that the height of um, uh, what is the height of arrogance? Thank you. Uh, er- all of that. I invented a new word for it. Good. It's called elitoc- elitocracy. Oh, like it. That'll Ru- be in the dictionary. Ru- 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 yeah, yeah. 
It's re- it, it, it's really I've and been pretty it, disturbed about. Well, that. there is an essential arrogance when at least three or four or five members of the court have their own relig- religious beliefs that they somehow feel should be imposed on other people without the right and consent and the democratic processes involved in making law. They're saying that they themselves are above the law by saying that, for example, all the women's bodies in this country are no longer their own and other things that are really extremist. And, uh, but the trouble is, it's very difficult to do anything about getting rid of them. If they could be embarrassed by shame, they appear to be people who know no shame. If they're uh, embarrassed by political talk, they have a lifetime appointment. They're, they're just there. And I, I hope the court could be increased in number and that somehow some resignations or uh, impeachments could happen. But uh, it's, a, it's a sorry insult to democracy to have people with those extremist views imposing them on the whole country. Agreed. Has a, has a, a Supreme Court justice ever been impeached? Uh, there have been some who've retired under an ethical cloud, a Portis back in the 70s or so. Uh, I don't think actually impeached. Uh, they're, uh, uh, no, not that I'm aware of. Uh, and uh, again, back to the amendments and how hard it is, a lifetime appointment yeah. shouldn't be, uh, I don't think that should be part of the a Supreme Court judge. And uh, I think age limits should be imposed. But again, impossible, not impossible, but very hard. <laughs> I'm getting a scowl from Ray. <laughs> okay, I'll go 85. <laughs> no. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> but anyway, but it's because um, the amendments are so hard to change. Um, and by the way, I would just want everybody to know you're listening, of course, to KCIW 100.7 FM, all volunteer community radio station. And uh, like Ray had said, uh, if you feel you want to te- text in, it's 541 661 4098. Your mention of uh, the age <laughs> or the lifetime appointment. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not exactly a young person myself, well, and I don't I. like people to stereotype us strictly on age, but our government is a gerontocracy. Look at the U.S. Senate. Right. Look at the age of the people running for president. And uh, it, it's... And they're calling change, changes in, in the attitudes or rules, if you call them, of the population. Woke, who somehow or another has become... Uh, a, a terrible thing, you know. And yeah, they beat gay, that. Gay death. rights would, would would just appear like overnight after um, the the riots in New York and some other stuff, and it, it eventually it became that being gay was like having brown eyes or blue eyes or whatever. And now, for some reason or other, this is back in the in in the in the society again. We're grooming the way a drag shows are, are, are grooming young kids or that. The, the swing to the, what I would call the extreme right, and this is just a guess, but my opinion is, I think it started to me when uh, Reagan befriended uh, Jerry Falwell and the moral majority started, which I don't think they were either moral or a majority. But anyway, um, ever since then, it's, and, and religion has become, uh, some people still claim that God is in the Constitution. Oh, he, I he wrote it. It's such a wonderful. Well, document. or God inspired. He had to. Had to yeah. God inspired. It's officially considered uh, an inspired document by the Mormon Church, for example. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Which, again, I don't believe. I think most people don't believe that, but it's the open to interpretation. Mm-hmm. Well, mo- again, and vague. Mm-hmm. I, I see some va- some vagaries. Is that the right word? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, In there. I, Go ahead, Kevin. I see we're halfway through the show. You guys are good talkers, <laughs> so I, I'm gonna try to insert myself where I can. The um, 
when I'm when I'm writing my column, when I'm talking to people, I try to inform people to think about things that are happening now that that we should be aware of. And when I look at the First Amendment, which I'll just only read part of, but it says it's very short. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press. And I want to touch on that one right now because I think the people that wrote this, no matter who they were, could not have imagined the things that are happening with media monopolies uh-huh. today. Yeah, or um, technology. Um, media, specifically, uh, Sinclair Broadcasting operates 185 TV stations, local TV stations, and people trust local news. So this is in, insidious what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And in, in 2018, they forced their acres to read this Same statement on, on the local world. news yeah. on every station, 185 TV stations, that they said, the sharing of bias and false news has become all too common on social media. And more alarming... Some media outlets publish these same fake stories without checking facts first. Unfortunately, some members of the media use their platforms to push their own personal biases and agenda to control exactly what people think. And this is extremely dangerous to our democracy. How bold of them to say that as if they were predicting what they themselves were going to do Mm. and just did this year, where they took a story... From the uh, uh, Wall Street Journal, which is owned by Rupert Murdoch, yes. which was, uh, and then they used that as their source, and then they wrote a script for all their anchors, same thing, all their anchors read it on the air, stating more or less that it is uh, uh, reporting for, in the Wall Street Journal calling into question the mental fitness of President Joe Biden. This issue should be an election decider. I mean, this is propagandists Mm -hmm. quoting other propagandists. And uh, I don't know if we have a Sinclair station in this area. Yes, yes. Uh, 26. Or no, no, 10. So there you go. And But then I went deeper. We have, uh, first of all, God bless community radio. You guys are great for keeping this alive and having an alternative voice because this is what people need is to have another voice to be able to hear. Um, Bicoastal Media owns 54 stations, including two in Crescent City, uh, Curry Radio here, uh, 54 stations. I don't know that they're doing the same thing as Sinclair Broadcasting, but just being aware that these companies own this many outlets Uh, and they do all swing right. And finally, the uh, country media, which owns the Del Norte triplicate that I that I write for, and um, and the Curry um, Coastal Pilot Pilot, Pilot, Pilot in, less. In, they have a dozen newspapers uh, in Oregon and California, including Lincoln County, Columbia County, Polk County, Tillamook, Cottage Grove, Cannon Beach, Bandon. They're they're very similar newspapers. I know that sometimes our, our Oregon stories get published in the triplicate and, and sometimes vice versa. Now, I have to say about at least my interrelationship with country media, they specifically invited me to write a column for them knowing that I was a Democrat, knowing that mm-hmm. I was a liberal. And their intent uh, initially was to what I call a dueling banjos uh, give and take with another conservative guy. Um, so they had a good intent to do that. What happened in the in the ensuing years is the guy that was writing the conservative column is now the reporter. Mm-hmm. Um, so they definitely lean to the right, but but they have found it important, and and I give them credit for giving me a free voice because my only condition on writing for them is that you have to print what I give you, and when you start editing my opinions, then then we're done. Forget it. I, I'd like to mention a couple things. Oh, it looks like there is a text, but... Uh, oh, two texts. Two, two texts. texts. Uh, can I respond a bit to just what he said on, on ownership of, of local media? Uh, Channel 10 in Medford is a CBS outlet, but it's owned by Sinclair. Channel 10 no longer has a newsroom. Channel 26 no longer has a newsroom. Uh, and so these are not only... Uh, 
involvement of big chains, but they're cutting out news like crazy, and that's really unfortunate. Now, on the local print uh, print area, uh, I like to talk about the pilot list. Uh, the, uh, in the case of Brookings, we had a major story that was a headline in headlines all over the world even. Uh, I, I know because I've written about it myself and gotten uh, communications from South Africa, and that has to do with St. Tim's and the city of Brookings. Well, the court in Medford ruled decisively, uh, I forget exactly when, uh, but in March 17, I, anyway, it took the owners of the pilot list three weeks to have anything in their paper about what the court decision was. Three and three weeks. Right. They were reluctant, definitely reluctant well, to do that. And, and I had a history of sending in uh, opinion columns, letters to the editor type thing. They always got lost. Got lost. I, I had the same thing. I, I, I've written, I, I, I call them up and, <laughs> well, I'm not the person who handles the emails and <laughs> blah, blah. And, right. And, uh, so it, it's it's a joke. The, the the only decent print ministry around here is the Lost Coast Post Outpost. Outpost, or I have trouble getting the name straight. Uh -huh. uh, but th that's really sad. And uh, media, uh, other media is changing. But uh, I wanted to mention that. Yeah, you have a couple. Uh, that's an excellent point. I want to give them a plug too. Um, the Lost, uh, the Wild Rivers Outpost yeah. uh, is an online publication that does an excellent job in covering uh, local news. I have a text here, okay, yeah. which I'm not sure I understand. I think... Yeah, I'll read it in that order, but it still doesn't make sense to me. Hopefully, and then you guys get to comment on it. <laughs> I remember seeing that on TV, it is pure propaganda. Uh, I remember... I'm remembering that the Supreme Court can legally be expanded to 13 members since there are 13 districts. I don't know about the 13 districts, but do you want to all it, comment on the idea of expanding the Supreme Court? It can be expanded to any number the Congress agrees to. I don't understand I why expanding it would make any difference. I mean, uh -huh. now we have, have a, a, uh, uh, You get two or three new yeah, you have new they people could, They could just as easily... Uh, Go the other way. In other words, well, the same more way, right. yes. Well, I think the theory is Biden gets elected, and then he gets yeah, to a point. Yeah, but that takes care of four years. That doesn't t take care of well, many years down the road. Well, I don't there, know. There was a time when it had seven members, I believe, and right, and and uh, I believe it, it can be adjusted. Yeah, it was Roosevelt. And there, I, I think there is some. There is an argument to be made, not about age, but uh, term limits. I mean, uh, that, that yeah. having a limited term. Because the whole idea of having a lifetime appointment is you don't have to fear f for right. being kicked uh, out. Yeah. But if you have a fixed term, you know you're solid for that period of yeah. time and you make your best decisions. And that kind of hurt and us. That way, uh, when things get stacked the way they are right now, in my opinion, um, it only lasts for a limited period of time and there's a turnover, there's a churn. That yeah, I wonder if term limits in. could be done strictly by congressional action. I don't see anything in the Constitution that describes. It's it's shocking how little it describes about the courts. Yeah, I mean, there's a. It, it does mention that the uh, Congress has a say on the the money spent by the courts and things like that. So there's, right, uh, there's, there's a, there's a whole article, there. a whole section yeah. uh, under the legislative on the legislative powers. Yeah, but I was looking this morning to see if there's any delineation of executive powers. Nope. Or or mm -hmm. courts, not really. Well, um, again, that, so that, that I don't know how it all works, but I think that means the yeah the legislature can set rules for for how to do it. I think that's possible. Yeah. Get, getting back to the news services, I I just wonder when did we get so dumb that we believe some of the things we we see on the news. Well, speak for yourself. Uh, no, <laughs> no, I, no, the population. I'm talking about. Just, oh, yeah. How can they? How can they sit and wa or, or listen it's, to um, Infowars and, and actually give that guy some credence? I've seen bumper stickers. It's just like the, the Curry Pilot people. The the media Pilot serves was. the news people yeah. want to see. Or who is the other you guy? Know, that Fox, Fox News. The, Fox News is not very accurate. No. In fact, there was a study that that showed that people that watch Fox News as the primary news source are less informed 
than people that don't watch any news. Fox <laughs> News paid uh, three quarters of a billion dollars almost uh, judgment Fine. against them for lying, not for misrepresenting, not for doing, not for making mistakes, for just out and out lying. All right. their top people just continued this lie about the uh, the voting machines. So when it came to going to court, obviously they couldn't have Hannity and some of these other people that lied uh, try to defend themselves, so they'd be perjuring themselves, so they just settled. So it's a pretty pretty obvious to anybody that watches Fox News or heard that that uh, that settlement that should realize that maybe Fox News is at times something less than accurate. What, what so, I uh, often recommend to people is is whatever your preferred news is, don't rely on one source. That's you true. Know, that's good. I if do that. you want to have a perspective, you need to have different sources of I have information. A, I have a and, news and, thing on my, on my phone. Where, uh, and the other night I was reading the news, and like every fourth thing was an MSNBC news, and it was ridiculous. I mean, they, were, they weren't as bad as Fox News, I don't think, mm. but they were so opinionated that I had to go through and stress my technical knowledge and eliminate that from my queue of news. But not long after They're feeding that, you because huh? they know you want to see it, even though you're denying it. They, yeah, AI I mean, is feeding you. They'll that. find it some other way. Yeah, yeah. MSNBC you know, but, did do but a But these are, the, these are the, the, quote, legitimate news sources. Yes. You know, the, it is um, the internet that is the Wild West of news. It, and when you consider or even think about the fact that both Russia and China are feeding fake news stories into the internet, mm -hmm. and then you see the re the the result of that is that oh I saw it on, I saw it on the internet it must be true that's a foolish thing to say but you have congressional people that are taking propaganda that came from Russia that shows up on on uh, social media and then they're accepting it to be true and then they're bringing it to the halls of Congress as if it was a fact I mean that is a really, really hard thing to counteract because... Um, and I believe most of them know it. They just know it'll work for in their favor for laws and mm -hmm. uh, whatever th that they want to pass. That it, about, about a week after Fox had to pay that judgment for the, the voting machines, uh, we have a, little, a, a local... Um, Oh, internet thing, I forget what it's called, with neighbor to neighbor kind of thing. Oh, yeah. You're supposed to. Next door. Yeah, next door neighbor. And about, about a week or with the, actually within a few days, uh, there was somebody wrote in, if you want to know what's really going on on the border, check with Fox News. This is the people who just paid three quarters of a billion dollars for lying. At the, at the, you just won't discourage them, evidently. No, it doesn't. Uh, I, I do want to jump back a bit back to the second amendment and the uh, uh the interpretation because it, it and again it's short also but the well regulated militia well back in oh, the 1700s get me started <laughs> oh, easy now right easy. <laughs> but you know but I, again it was written in the 1700 late 1700s so would that uh come out to today? Do, are they going to include the Proud Boys and some of these the, groups the, up in the Idaho? Of, the rate of fire in those days was about three rounds a minute. Sure. Yeah. Well, uh, okay, there again, and I underline... Uh, somebody was really good. Right, or the to keep and bear arms. Okay, but the arms then, again, yes, muskets. It didn't have the, the guy that and, killed 60 people in Vegas in uh, however many minutes. Yeah. My point is, it's you could read that and to say probably the originalists in the Supreme Court say, hey, it's an arm, an AK-47 is an arm, so you have the right to do it. And that's where it gets confusing to yeah, me. Well, the They're originalists don't even pay attention to the mention of the militias there. They've assumed that this means that every human being has a right to bear arms. Yes. And without the context of it being presented in the language itself right. uh, as related to militias. Now, um, historically, there was a lot going on before and after the uh, Revolutionary War about 
land and the fight between the haves and the have-nots. And often it had to do, and this is uh, not true in most cases, but true in most all cases, was the moneyed people lived near the coast. They had the money and the cities and the land, and the poor people lived beyond that. And doing things like crops that would help uh, create whiskeys, uh, I bar- I, I'm not sure what's all involved, but uh, uh, made for actually a whiskey rebellion uh, in upstate New York. And there were other things about, of that sort going on. And uh, there were actually militias in standoffs with uh, more official government military things. And uh, anyway, and, and there were militias that were specifically designed to uh, catch slaves that were runaways. And there was a lot going on there. But uh, the whole originalist idea, which uh, uh, is a result of, uh, of the type of ideologues that took over the, federal, the Federalist Society and the Republican Party's uh, judge-making wing, uh, has this idea that you should go back to the original language of the Constitution. Well, often the original language is, uh, the, is ignored. is just an excuse to come up with uh, other reasons for doing what they're doing. And it also has the idea that, uh, that the world has not changed. And the bump stock as opposed to the musket uh, and uh, lots of other ways uh, and, and knowledge about the female body. Uh, and these idiots, excuse the expression, but I can't think of anything that fits better, mm-hmm. who think that finding some uh, 17th century English uh, misanthrope's opinion on uh, on matters of uh, uh, morality, morality and sexuality, and mm-hmm. if they're to get some teeth in it, maybe even some molarity. But uh, excuse the pun, I like to have puns with teeth in them. Uh, but uh, anyway, the original, uh, but uh, what happened in recent American history, uh, I think around the 1980s, is the Republican Party realized that they were going to always be the minority pro- uh, party because there just aren't that many white people producing enough. Uh, uh, members for their country club set. And uh, therefore, they saw that the way to get their opinions enforced on the American people is through the courts. And they designed in a very sophisticated way of courting young attorneys to be members of uh, groups that were really interested in, in their, their political views. And they succeeded. Leonard Leo is at the heart of this. Uh, and uh, there's one famous photograph that was enha- enhanced somehow after it was made uh, of Le- Leonard Leo, uh, Mr. Clarence Thomas, uh, and his great benefactor, uh, the guy who loves all the Nazi memorabilia, uh, all together. And they were all part of what was a deliberate conspiracy over 30, 40 years to pack the courts, especially the Supreme Court, with people they recruited and own and control. That was a long sentence. Well, yes. that's okay. So long how, thought. So how do we start to counteract that? And, and, and they're dug in pretty deep right now. And uh, I don't know about... Well, well, that's where expanding the court comes in well, as a possibility. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, otherwise... Uh, unless they soon learn shame. Uh, actually, the the thing I said about Alito before and elitocracy, I, I put that in uh, response to some things in both the Washington Post and the New York Times, uh, and I'm probably going to recycle them too with Alito and his wife being uh, so crazy of late. I love the stuff about the flags. And um, one thing I really want to track down is Mrs. Alito talked about creating a flag 
that used the imagery of the holy Christ's uh, heart. The, yeah, Christian yeah. nationalism was. It? Yeah, well, it, the, there's a specific Catholic term, and it, oh. it's the sacred, the sacred it's heart the of sacred Jesus. Heart. And there's a, a saints or a, a liturgical day related to that. And I got the impression that it's somehow related to uh, some of the court actions as to uh, whether Roe v. Wade was overturned on that day or not. I'm not sure. I want to track that down, but there. The, the this conviction that these weirdo uh, justices in strange parts of the Catholic sphere uh, should be controlling everything that is so basic to our liberty is just outrageous. And to attribute that to divine stuff, I, as a, a person of faith, find really shameful. Hmm. And I know this gets... I think every election, somebody or people start. This is the most important election we've ever. Well, had. This is, yeah, but <laughs> this one really I, is. I believe this one. because if if Trump is elected, mm. and there's a chance, I sure hope it doesn't happen. But th- this is just going to go even more haywire. I with the co- there there may be more justices. Oh, uh, if he gets to a point more, sure. I don't know. Sure. I think I think on the next show we'll probably be talking more about Trump, but. Okay. Uh, and and when I said earlier, when did we get so stupid and really believe some of this stuff we see on the news? I mean, I could probably right now sit down and scribble out two pages of things that he has said that were ridiculous or absolute just and out and out lies that he's told. Yeah, and even the ones that originally were against that the inner insurrection have all. Turned around and yeah, uh, they were tourists. Totally they were just they were just tourists that wanted to get in there when it was closed. They got a little out of hand. A little out of hand. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. but you know, you we've seen them twist and turn to try to. If you ask him the simp, ask them the simple, do you believe uh, the election was fraudulent? That that type of stuff, and and they just refuse to answer that question, even though you know that they know that it wasn't fraudulent. <laughs> <laughs> Hope that came out right. The thing about the insurrection that I was wondering as I was watching it happening, right, uh, yelling at my television, right, where the hell's the security? You know, they had like five cops standing out in front. Well, and uh, I, I know we're not supposed to do this, so maybe we we can legally do it. But we uh, don't we have the Proud Boys and groups like that infiltrated, so we know something about what their plans are going to be. Well, you know, apparently that. It, it, who had thought that was really going to happen? Well, I mean, we, I, don't, I sure we know well, that they are. Not. Well, think about who who was in charge. You know the um, fact that Trump, Trump's administration was in charge of those sources of information. Um, you know, it, it, they may have known. It, Steve maybe they Bannon. Did, maybe was they did know, but crying um, out clearly, all hell's going to break loose. And right. I, you know, I had mixed feelings because. Uh, Seriously, the president could, could have called out the National Guard, but I actually had the reverse uh, concern because at that time it, it just seemed uh, that it might be worse if the military stepped up because that would be the way to start a coup, and that mm. would make me uncomfortable also. When that's something he could have done, um, instead he did nothing. Obviously, all right. Well, he claims he did, uh, and uh, uh, what's her course. name well, said she didn't want them. Pointed out. Oh. Oh, Nancy Pelosi? No, not Pelosi. He meant to say Pelosi, or he thought it would be Pelosi. But it... Yeah, he blamed Nikki Haley. Mickey, Mickey, oh, Nikki Haley, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah, was in okay. California, so... Yeah, I and to, Pelosi um, was not in charge of security anyway. Before right. we run out of time, periods of uh, reasons for hope. Good. You know, when... Let um, get my paper out here. <laughs> when, because I'm a, I'm a Democrat. I'm the chair of the Delaware County Democratic Party, and um, but I but we have to talk to... Our Republican brothers and sisters, and and some people can. I do use as a litmus test when somebody says they support Trump. My follow up question is, do you believe that Biden won the election? Okay. So if they say yes, then at least we can start having a conversation. <laughs> but I heard on TV when the Supreme Court made the recent bad decision, there Which was a quote from Chief Justice Warren Burger, who was appointed by Richard Nixon, mm-hmm. who said that. This whole support for uh, high-powered weapons 
is the greatest fraud on the American public ever because it was driven by the NRA oh, yeah. and the lobbying that the NRA and the, the uh, people that were elected Unmakers. with the support from the NRA. And it, it gives me hope that there was a time when a Republican could have a reasonable opinion about things. And then they had quotes from uh, George W. Bush, not my favorite. He looks like a genius compared to Trump, but um, <laughs> my opinion he, he supported background checks. He supported a, an extension of the the, the assault weapons ban. The, the NRA is 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 a uh, an arm of the gun manufacturers, not gun owners. They yeah. oh yeah yeah Smith and Wesson yeah. and the people like that are the people that keep if the there's NRA any going. hope their power seems to be waning. But it, it just I think it's it's important to recognize that people from the Republican side of the aisle can come to the right conclusions. That there is hope that some of them will come around and be on the right side of history. Um, it doesn't seem hopeful all the time, but but um, we do have to find a way to work through this because, first of all, is there a need to regulate the monopolistic tendencies of media? The fact that they're controlled by, the again, the wealthy people. I mean, that's the part that's consistent, mm -hmm. right, Robert? Yep. yep. Uh, the, Power is still controlled by the wealthy people. The media is con the messages you hear is controlled by the people that have the power and have the money. And is there a reason to have some regulations for how many TV stations you can own? Is there a reason to have some regulations on on screening for Russian and Chinese propaganda coming out? A uh, story that I remember from from the G.W. Bush era is. After 9-11, uh, they, they apparently, they really didn't like Saddam Hussein. They wanted to attack Iraq, even though it had nothing to do nothing with 9-11. But what happened was they leaked information to a, to a newspaper, I don't remember which one it was, that there was yellow cake uranium in Niger. Hmm. They leaked it to the newspaper, then the newspaper published it, and then the next thing I knew, Dick Cheney's quoting that as a source. Right for why they have mm -hmm. to attack, even though the information was planted and then it was used and, it was, and then it, it became- a very poor source too. I can't remember what it was, but it was, it was like kindergarten But fake. those are the <laughs> things that can happen where we're being uh, skeptical about any source of news is just a healthy thing. And how do we, I'm not sure we're getting more stupid, but people are not well informed and partially is I don't think they've stupid learned, is a poor word. They've ignorant. learned the, they've learned the critical thinking necessary to sort through the the information that's available and decide what is and what maybe is lost is is apparently with some of the Trump supporters is the ability to just sort out the bull that is coming on a daily basis. Okay, okay. we're coming coming up on another oh, text. Do maybe? we have a text quickly? Okay. Okay, well, while while operators are uh, absorbing that text, I want to remind everybody this is a program anybody can participate in. KCIW.org, just say, I want to be part of uh, uh, Curry Cafe. Clearly, they'll let me hear, so yeah. anybody can do this. <laughs> Here comes okay, the text. We're, we're, we have this text. Let's see. Um, okay, here's a text that is not a question. It's a statement. Regulation of any kind takes an act of... Congress. Congress and nothing is getting through Congress these days. That's an no, observation. That's true. They love you. Okay, we're down to about a minute and a half for people have closing statements or I just want to say maybe how... we're out of statements. We've been making a lot of paper. <laughs> uh, encourage people, anybody that's listening, which you already are doing, is support community radio as an independent source of information, another source of information, as I've mentioned before. You know, listen to multiple sources and this um before I was invited to do this, I didn't even realize I listened to this station because uh, it's a good station when I'm traveling through, and I get this in Crescent City. Good music, good programming. Um, thank you for yeah. doing this. Awesome. And if you, you want to re if you want to refer to somebody to to this program, or if you want to listen to it again, or you miss parts of it, go to kciw.org and you can find our um, replay there. I have one thing I want to mention is creating one's own platforms for communication are helpful. Uh, on the St. Tim's stuff here in Brookings, I uh, put up uh, on Robert H. O'Sullivan 
on YouTube and have um, videos of things that uh, people should be getting from other sources but aren't, and that's that's the way to share too. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Kevin.